are only three known self-portraits by Alexis Preller. This beautiful work, the portrait of the artist as an old man, painted in 1950, and another version of him that he painted himself next to his easel in 1940. The third one is a, a, a self-portrait he did of himself in front of a series of African heads. It is quite uncanny how well and how accurately uh, Preller depicted his older self in this 1950 uh, painting. If you look at photographs of the artist taken before he died in 1975, the, the, pens, the very um, thoughtful expression, the grey hair and moustache are so similar to, to this work here that it is really uncanny. In this work, uh, Preller depicts himself twice, once rather modestly at the bottom of the picture plane, looking pensively out and very thoughtfully out of, of the image, and a second version set back into the landscape of a full-figure version of himself. The uh, overall lighting of this work is clearly in the evening, with soft shadows cast over the entire painting. This is clearly a work where one, where Preller engages with his, um, with his inner thoughts, his subconscious and his imagination. He surrounds himself with these emblematic and very symbolic images. On the left of the canvas, we see the, um, a direct quotation from De Chirico, where he shows this desolate building set in an um, abandoned landscape. Then there's also the recurring branch that in this um, instance supports the tabletop in the form of a disc. Very important to Preller are books and learning. And in this work, it's particularly prevalent. We find the book on the table-like surface. He portrays a book uh, next to his head. And then we have the pages of, the, uh, of a book scattered on the ground in front of the second version of himself. It's clearly a, a depiction of Preller, but in retrospect almost evokes a Einstein look figure. Significant in the work of Preller are the harmonies and the, the harmonies and the lyrical aspects of the cello. This cello was borrowed from his next door neighbor the daughter of his next door neighbour when he lived in Elangeni outside of Pretoria, who happened to be Henk Pirnev. So this is the cello of Marika, or Mickey as she was known. Um, Prello was fascinated by not only the instrument, but also the strings of the instrument. And he uses and reuses this imagery in many of his works. In this instance, the strings of the cello form the cage of the mango, another very iconic and emblematic image in, the, in um, Preller's oeuvre. This absolute gem called the fish that he painted in 1953. Um, Preller was fascinated by um, the harmonies and hues of the shoals of fish and also the shapes and forms of the fruit and the flowers and the birds when he visited the Seychelles between 1948 and 1959. He made a number of studies of this work and in 1953 paints this highly stylized, emblematic and beautiful depiction of, of the fish. We find again these delineated lines reminiscent of the strings of a um, cello and these contours as well as the clearly delineated um, images of the fin. He places the fish right in the centre of the work, as he often does with totemic figures. He surrounds it with egrets, which you also find that he did with a David that he painted, and also with a ritual bull. They seem, the egrets seem to be a marker or signifier of the importance and the, symbol, the symbolic importance of the um, fish and the animal. Instead of the eye of the fish, as another marker of the emblematic importance of the work, Preller uses the eye of, a, of the bull that also serves as a marker. He places the fish 
above the horizon and in the sky one, ha one has these arches that are like falling stars. This beautiful work by Preller is an absolute gem and we're very happy to have it on our upcoming auction.